Have you heard of Hagar the Horrible? I hope you haven't, because it's horrible. Ha! Anyway, Hagar the Horrible is a newspaper comic for people with stale, middle-aged, white-bread senses of humor. Basically, it stars a Viking who likes to drink lots of beer and act very primitive, just like Sammy Hagar from Van Halen, hence the name Hagar the Horrible. Anyway, I was reading Hagar the Horrible one day when I noticed something. It wasn't very funny. Besides that, the punchline didn't make much sense. In the first panel, Hagar the Horrible goes to the local pub to drink some beers. I like to drink beer, says Hagar the Horrible, looking frizzled and unkempt. There is something seriously wrong with this caveman beard. Oh, Viking caveman beard. Viking. Caveman and Viking were two separate things. One, one existed 10,000 years ago when the world was created, and the other more like 6,000 and you know, the magical land of Scandinavia that looks like mutilated genitals on a map. Sorry. Sorry, I, that was inappropriate. Anyway, in, in the second panel, you could tell that it was just the coffee mug zoomed in, so to speak. It was a coffee mug, but it was supposed to be a beer glass. I didn't really know what to make of it, except that in the third panel... The glass shards of the beer glass coffee mug were sharded up inside of Hagar the Horrible's wrists. Life is pain, and then you die. Uh, uh, was that a punchline? I, d I didn't know if it was, so I decided to write my local newspaper king comic syndicate who who created Hagar the Horrible and said, hey, bitch, this comic was this depressing and I'm a middle-aged white man who just wants to, you know, heck and mow the grass and grill, not hear about the Senate majority leaders, period. Is, is the Senate majority leader a woman? I don't know. They don't, they don't tell us on Fox News. Anyway, don't put this shit in the newspaper again or I'm going to set your office on fire. Lo and behold, Hagar the Horrible appeared the following Sunday in the dollar and fifty cent. You have to be friggin' rich to afford these these things. Dollar and fifty cents. You can't even get a stick of gum with that anymore. Uh, you could get a fruit stripe gum stick, but they uh, the flavor doesn't last very long. False advertising. Does it even taste like real fruit? Does it even taste like real fruit? Tastes like a tomato. Tomato technically is a fruit, but uh, they got a tomato and veggie tails. And the last they checked, it's called veggie tails, not fruit tails. Oh, uh, well. well. What am I doing? Yeah, so basically I wrote them a letter. It was, it was still there. And at this time, it was the same exact comic as last time, except this time it was the glass coffee mug complaining about life being pain, and it was drinking Hagar the Horrible. Hagar the Horrible was in liquid form. Now, I will admit that that confounded all logic, so I wrote a letter to Stephen Hawking, who was alive at the time, and I said, can you please explain this Hagar the Horrible comic to me, because it doesn't make a lick of friggin' sense. Well, I never got a reply to that letter, but lo and behold, a few weeks later, there was a knock at my door, and I opened it up. Hello there. Hmm, I didn't see anyone. I looked down, and yep, it was Stephen Hawking in his trademark chair. Hello. You have written me letter about American comics. It's not American. He's a fucking Viking, and he ain't from Minnesota, I said, drunken at 8 o'clock in the morning. I have no friends or job. There is something you must know. Life is about not you or your hedonistic desires. Hedonism was a philosophy alive at the time of the Vikings. You mean caveman, I said? Shut the fuck up, it's Vikings, bitch. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, drinking beer is not good for your health. It ages you and it isn't full of nutrients. Did you know that black holes emit radiation and so does your mom, except radiation doesn't escape from your mom because she's so fat and lacks gravity? I smacked Stephen Hawking across the face. Highly realistic or flew everywhere and splurted. And Stephen Hawking's skull rolled off and fell into the sewer and was being munched on by rats. I called the police on myself and I went to jail for a few years. That wasn't even the worst part of it, though. 
I played blues harmonica to myself every night about that horrible Hagar the Horrible comic strip or two comic strips that were essentially the same. Wondering if life would ever make sense again. I asked the warden for beer and he told me to fuck off because I'm a convict. I, uh, I shared a jail cell with a guy who committed tax fraud. You know, even worse than the guy next to me. He was not, now that guy was a serial rapist. That's pretty bad. A tax fraud, whole other level. I mean, shit. People don't pay their taxes. Fuck them. They're worse than Vikings. Anyway, I was eventually let out of jail because I told the warden and the, and, the, and the jail psychiatrist that if I was let out of jail, I would make myself just like a, a Viking and rape and pillage and, and in order to find out the, the horrible truth about the Hagar, the horrible comic strip. They said that that showed that I progressed with my creative thinking because they thought I was going to participate in National Novel Writing Month or write a novel about Hagar, the horrible. But no, I meant it. Um... So uh, I bought a blow-up doll and had sex with it, you know, against against its wishes, technically speaking, because it was a blow-up doll. Blow-up dolls don't have souls; they're not real people. So we we could count that as as a sex crime. And and they threw me back in prison. Who knew? You know, you know, you get uh, twelve years in prison for uh, for uh, bleeping a sex doll. Then again, uh, I'm pretty sure it was the Teddy Ruxpin. And, and that would be beastie alley. What? what? Anyway, yeah, so I, I, I'm supposed to be let out of jail on good behavior in a few years. But the most horrifying and sad part of this whole affair is I now realize what that Hagar, the horrible comic strip, was all about. You see, life is relative. There, there are different positions that you could, that you could sit in and, and stare at the world around you as an observer. You could be just a simple observer out in space watching a rocket ship go out in space, or you could be the guy in the rocket ship looking otherwise. If you study general relativity and, and special relativity, as Albert Einstein did many years ago when he created the suckers, you, you would notice that things appear to go faster or slower than they actually do based on observation. In fact, time itself doesn't exist. What does exist is change, which is measured as time. Sometimes you'll see the Greek letter delta used to measure change. If there's change, you, with your aptitude, able to perceive and, and sense, will notice that things are not quite the same. If a tree falls in the woods and no one's there to hear it, does it make a sound? Well, the answer is no, because in order to make a sound, you need a biological mechanism to transfer the vibrations of the, of the waves into being a sound, because a sound is then made by your biological senses. Otherwise, there is no sound to make. There's just, there's just the vibrations that don't matter. They don't mean anything. Why would it be a sound? Kind of like how color doesn't exist. It's just wavelengths of light that get interpreted by our eyes as being colors. I mean, if you think about it, it's pretty fucking insane. If you still don't believe in God, what the fuck is wrong with you? I mean, shit. Anyway, that, that's that's when it occurred to me. When I when I had sex with that uh, teddy bear blow-up doll, um, it, it, it was covered in uh, it was covered in uh, in some sort of disease. Don't know what it was. I I, I guess some uh, doctor or. Uh, or bad dude, bad scientist just uh, covered it uh, in uh, Vaseline and, uh, you know, pick your poison, whatever they make in synthetic labs these days. So uh, I'm not going to make it to the 12 years to, to, to make it to the end. But anyway, moral of the story is, you know, coffee mug, beer glass, Hagar the Horrible. Th that's the observer effect right then and there. And uh, life is pain. Did I mention that I met Stephen Hawking? Have you ever been sucked up by a black hole? Because I can tell you, that's pretty fucking painful. And uh, life came from a black hole right in the middle of the galaxy. Look it up. And the real, the real scary thing about all this is Hagar the Horrible. It's really scary how it could have lasted as long as it did. That's, that's pretty messed up.